Hi, I'm Liz Moser, a Mayo Clinic and National Board Certified Health and Wellness Coach. What's currently grabbing my attention is this book, The Alzheimer's Solution, written by doctors Aisha and Dean Sherzai. They're a husband and wife neurologist duo who met and bonded at a get together while discussing their grandfathers who were both brilliant men who very sadly succumbed to dementia later in life. This dynamic doctor duo is passionate about the research behind staving off dementia and they've been using their knowledge and ongoing research with their thousands of patients for over 15 years. Would it surprise you to know that only 3% of dementia patients succumb to the disease solely based on their genetics? The remaining 97% of Alzheimer's cases may be linked to genetics, but the field of epigenetics indicates that we turn on or off our genes via our lifestyle habits. For 97% of the population, dementia and Alzheimer's could most likely be alleviated or eliminated with certain lifestyle changes. What lifestyle changes specifically? Well, Team Sherzai has a five-prong research-based approach called the Neuro Plan. N-E-U-R-O stands for nutrition, exercise, unwind, encompassing stress relievers such as Tai Chi, yoga, or meditation, rest or sleep habits, and optimize level of education, uh, the mental challenges of your career, bilingualism, musical skills, and dedication to lifelong learning. They offer an online test that took me about 15 or 20 minutes to complete. If you're interested, first go to, to um, www.teamshareside.com, click on NeuroPlan, and then click on Take Assessment. You will have to log in and create a password. However, it's worth the small amount of effort. I took the test and scored excellently in nutrition, as you can imagine, because their, their research favors a whole food, plant-based diet, low in sugar. I scored a little bit lower in other areas with exercise being the one that truly surprised me the most. Exercise. I kind of thought I had that nailed. No, no, I did not. <laughs> According to these doctors and their research, my exercise um, up to two weeks ago when I switched things up would primarily be categorized as the U of the neural plan or in the unwind category. If you go on a walk and your heart rate isn't in the aerobic zone, which you can calculate by taking 220 minus your age times 0.7 and 0.8, then your walk is a relaxing stroll. My morning weightlifting counts, woo -woo, but yoga, no, not exercise. It counts as relaxing and unwinding, despite what my muscles might say about it. <laughs> if you are sweating and short of breath, movement counts as relaxing and unwinding, according to the anti-dementia research. The kicker for me and my biggest aha regarding exercise is that sitting for three or more hours per day, and it doesn't necessarily have to be in a continuous session, increases your score of Alzheimer's risk by as much as exercising in the last year for 120 minutes of strenuous aerobic exercise per week decreases it. Does that make sense? That's kind of confusing. <laughs> as far as this test goes, and the research, you gain as many positive points by the 52 weeks of 120 minutes of weekly aerobic exercise as you lose points if you sit for more than three hours each day. That blew me away. Okay, I get that I need to sweat more and be sure to breath. As Team Shares, I repeatedly says in their book, what's good for your heart and your entire body is also good for your brain, right? We're not a closed system. My brain doesn't live in a box. <laughs> But a year of two hours per week of aerobic exercise is as good for you as not sitting for more than three hours each day. That kind of shocks me. I don't know about you. I, I then took an honest look at how much I sit during the day. First, my three whole food plant-based meals, which are huge, take me ages to eat. I probably spend close to an hour and a half eating my huge portions of fresh veggies and fruit. I'm not kidding. Well, that's half of my daily allotment of sitting time. I'm in trouble. <laughs> then I have two 20-minute meditation sessions each day. Hopefully, maybe a little time in the hot tub with my significant other, practicing the piano, and then watching a little TV at night. The doctor shares, I say, that the world would be a much healthier place 
if TVs didn't turn on unless people were pedaling their bikes. Then there's driving in the car. If I'm going to work or errands, I mean, we sit when we drive. Reading, working at the computer, talking to my clients, shooting my videos, etc., etc. If I wasn't working out, going for walks, cleaning the house, folding laundry, preparing food, chances are I was sitting and it added up. I sat for hours each day, way more than the recommended three hours. Furthermore, the share size assert that sitting down for an extended period negates any benefits from a 20 or 30 minute workout. I'm now committed to being more cognizant of this and I've made many changes. Um, I've rigged up a standing desk using two yoga, yoga blocks and a board. I now use my yoga block board contraption either inside right here in the sunroom or outside on my deck. Um, I am mainly standing when I'm at my desk and sometimes I'm sitting on my exercise ball. When I read or watch TV, I'm using a set of pedals I bought on Amazon for about $29. It is so cheap and rickety, I kid you not. I keep saying I'm going to return it. There are so many other options, but um, I haven't yet because, well, it works. They're, they're working just fine. I, I've also sat while squeezing a small exercise ball between my legs or strapping a stretchy band around my legs and pressing out. Um, I've also sat and stretched on the floor in kind of a straddle position or just kind of squatted down while answering client texts. Um, I now kneel on my meditation bench during meditation instead of sitting or I'm revisiting my beloved Viparita Karani, legs up the wall or on the sofa. I've also experimented with walking meditation. Yesterday was a gorgeous fall day here in Minnesota and I, and I took an afternoon walking meditation. It was so lovely. Finally, as of last week, I started recording my videos standing up. I am standing up, did you notice? <laughs> I also raised my piano stand and I am practicing on my feet. I've looked at all that I do and I've asked myself which activities I must sit for and which I don't really have to. What I've come up with is driving a car and maybe eating are the only two activities I think you really have to sit for and well, perhaps not even eating. Let's face it, tell me you've never eaten standing up. We all have. Okay, just being a little tongue in cheek there. So far, I've achieved four or so days in the last two weeks where I sat for less than three hours and, and the other days were many, many hours less than my old sloth-like amount. I'm focusing on progress, not perfection, and I'm committed to changing my sitting habits for the long term. Um, meanwhile, um, during my morning walks on the weekends, I've increased my pace significantly and I monitor my heartbeat, making sure it stays between 114 and 131 beats per minute, which is my aerobic range. Remember to calculate your aerobic heart rate. The formula is 220 minus your age times 0.7 and 0.8. So the research is in on a healthy brain and weekly aerobic activity coupled with a commitment to sit way less than most of us do is essential. However, the good news is that making these changes won't necessarily take any more time out of your busy schedule. If you are already spending time walking or biking, then calculate your aerobic range and push yourself a bit more to make sure 120 minutes or two hours each week of your existing movement is an aerobic activity. Also, figure out how many hours a day you sit and be prepared to be blown away. <laughs> then get creative and have fun. Make a game out of it and see if you can get your sit time down significantly or even to the three hours a day threshold recommended by the, the anti-Alzheimer's research and by doctors Aisha and Dean Sherazai. I'm Liz Moser. A Mayo Clinic and National Board Certified Health and Wellness Coach. And thank you for watching this vlog about the necessary habits of people who thrive mentally later in life. If you have any questions about this vlog, health, wellness, or wellness coaching with me, please reach out via my website at lizmosercoaching.com. Bye for now. Be well. And I will see you next week with another video.